Welcome to 5 Minutes DevOps. Today is May 23, 2025. So are your VPNs feeling uh, uh, less like a secure tunnel and maybe more like a traffic jam? Or maybe trying to manage that sprawl of developer tools feels a bit like, well, juggling chainsaws. Yeah, something like that. Today we're doing a deep dive into news and insights straight from the sources you shared that actually tackle these exact challenges. Sounds good. But before we jump in, quick quiz for you. What specific kind of alphabet soup authorization did GitLab dedicated for government recently get, <laughs> you know, to help out the public sector folks? Mm, alphabet soup. <laughs> Got it percolating. All right. Think on that. Our mission today, a quick focused look at what really matters in the material provided. Let's do it. Okay, first up, some pretty big news around government compliance and also uh, centralizing complexity. Yeah, the, the big one is GitLab dedicated for government. According to the source, it achieved FedRAMP moderate authorization. FedRAMP moderate. Okay, break that down a bit. That's significant, right? Oh, absolutely. FedRAMP is the U.S. government standard for cloud security. Moderate means it meets some uh, pretty strict requirements for handling sensitive, though unclassified, data. So this lets government agencies use GitLab's dedicated platform. Exactly. It's secure, single tenant, helps consolidate their tool chains, keeps data where it needs to be, you know, data residency, and just meets those tough security mandates. Makes secure software delivery simpler for them. Right. Helps tick those compliance boxes. And speaking of simplifying complexity, CloudBees rolled out something called CloudBees Unify. Yeah, and what's interesting here is the approach. It's a SaaS platform, but it's focused on centralizing the management and like the visibility across different DevOps tools. So GitHub, GitLab, Jenkins, whatever you're using. Right, it gives you that single pane of glass for governance and oversight. Ah, so you don't have to force everyone onto one standard tool. Precisely. No ripping and replacing. You get the governance without killing the tools teams. Like, mm. And this is getting more critical, right? Because AI is spitting out code faster. Creating more complexity. Exactly. You need that central automation just to kind of keep it all under control uh, and manage the costs. Makes sense. More code, more tools, more pain without that central view. Okay, let's pivot to security. Always a hot topic. The sources mention some uh, ongoing issues with traditional VPNs. Yeah, they really struggle in modern setups. Things like uh, true least privilege access VPNs aren't great at that. And credential protection once you're in? Yeah, once you're on the network, it's often too broad. Plus, detailed session monitoring is tricky. And let's be honest, they can be clunky for users, especially with cloud stuff. So what's the alternative the sources point to? Identity-based solutions are highlighted. HashiCorp Boundary was mentioned as an example. Okay, and how do those help? Well, they tie access directly to the user's identity, not just their network spots. You get much more fine-grained control. They can even inject credentials securely, give better audit trails. It simplifies access while boosting security. Feels like a necessary step up. Now, shifting focus a bit, something yeah. slightly more uh, alarming. Harvest now, decrypt later. Right, HNDL attacks. Mm -hmm. This is a really important kind of long-term threat to understand. So the idea is... Bad actors grab encrypted data now. Yeah, they just store it. Yeah. Even if they can't break the encryption today, they're betting that future quantum computers will be able to. Wow. So data we think is safe might be vulnerable later? That's the risk. It's serious for governments, big companies, anyone with long-term sensitive data. It means we need to think about post-quantum cryptography, like now not just to some sci-fi thing. A bit sobering. Yeah. And uh, more immediately, there was also a mention of a specific vulnerability, request smuggling. Yeah, in Cloudflare's Pingora framework, just a reminder that, you know, even with modern tools, constant vigilance is needed. Security is never done. True that. Okay, let's lean it up slightly. Developer tools and practices. Orbstack for macOS came up. Ah, uh, yeah, for Mac users running Docker and stuff. It's positioned as a high-performance alternative to Docker desktop especially optimized for Apple Silicon. High performance how? Faster file I.O., lower CPU and memory usage. That's the claim. It integrates containers, Kubernetes, even full Linux VMs really efficiently. Good for infra folks, DevOps people on Macs. Faster I.O. on Mac always gets my attention. And then there was that relatable story dependency problem. Well, who's that mod bloat? Yeah. The honk server author. Added one dependency, go feed, and it pulled in just a ton of other stuff. Bloomed the project size. Totally. Made tooling harder. It's a great little lesson, right? Sometimes adding a library adds more complexity than it saves. Mm. Maybe writing a small bit yourself is better. <laughs> We've all been there. Uh, quick hits. Firefly file system, 3FS. Yeah, super niche, designed for AI workloads. Crazy throughput, like 6.6 .6 terabytes per second read in a stress test. 
wild numbers. Wow. And for AWS folks and EKS dashboard. Yep. Launched in its OZS one central visibility for your EKS clusters across regions and accounts. Mm -hmm. Handy if you're deep in the AWS ecosystem. Gotcha. Okay, moving on to process and scaling. There's an interesting critique of uh, root cause analysis. Yeah, this challenge is a really common practice. The source argued that focusing too hard on one single root cause after an incident can be flawed. How so? Because systems are complex. Exactly. You can't perfectly predict the future based on one past factor. The risk is you fix that one thing, but miss all the other contributing signals, the other weaknesses in the system. So you don't actually improve overall resilience. Right. It's more about understanding the whole messy interplay of factors, not just finding a single scapegoat cause. That makes a lot of sense. And speaking of complex systems, the Instagram example. Yeah, their ML model registry, a great case study in scaling. They use Meta's own tool, Configurator, to standardize how they describe their thousands of ML models. And that standardization helped how? It enabled automated monitoring, alerting, mm -hmm. knowing which model does what, how important it is. Essential when you're operating at that massive scale. Okay, so pulling this all together, what's the takeaway for listeners? Well, it really highlights that constant tension in DevOps, doesn't it? Managing complexity that just keeps growing, uh, staying ahead of security threats, both now and, you know, the spooky future ones. And always searching for tools and practices that actually simplify things, not just add another layer. Yeah, making smart choices in a landscape that changes, like, daily. Absolutely. Okay, time to circle back. Remember that quiz question. What was that specific authorization GitLab dedicated for government achieved? Room roll, please. The answer is... FedRAMP moderate authorization. Nailed it. Or hopefully it did. If you found this deep dive valuable, the best free way to support us, rate, like, and subscribe wherever you're listening. It really helps. Yeah, totally. And join our growing Discord community. Let's keep the conversation going there. All right, one final provocative thought to leave you with. Given how fast AI is driving development, but also knowing about these long-term threats like quantum decryption, how should teams balance tackling today's security fires versus prepping for those fundamentally different future risks? Ooh, that's a tough one. Definitely something to chew on. Indeed. Thanks for diving in with us. See you next time.